Okay, so the objective of today. You guys can simply read the instructions right here. We're gonna get a, get a little bit familiar with HTML and CSS, okay? Uh, actually, I'm gonna do the slides. The goal of this week is to know how to build almost any website. Obviously, that is a, uh, a loaded thing to say. You're not gonna be able to build everything, but you should be able to make things look the way you want them to look. What we're gonna cover this week is HTML, CSS, and then next week we're gonna move into Bootstrap, or uh, uh, JavaScript. I apologize for our Vietnamese friends. If I speak too quickly, Please raise your hand and ask me to say it again. That's good for everyone. Okay? Here's some nice diagrams. I know this seems very abstract, but in a moment, I'm going to show you how these all work together. Every, okay, so what is HTML? HTML means hypertext markup language. It's basically how we describe to the computer how to draw the screen. Every single web page across the internet is made up of HTML. And there's a key word here I want you guys to think about. Elements. Elements and tags, okay? Here you guys can see a basic structure for an HTML uh, page. And that results in this screenshot right here. Don't worry, that looks ugly. We're gonna make it more complicated in just a moment. So you guys can see what, basically a high level overview of an HTML tag, okay? You guys will see this uh, less than sign, the name of the tag, and possibly some uh, attributes. This thing right here that says class is called an attribute. And there are many, many different types of attributes. We're going to become more familiar with them as uh, the class or as the course progresses, okay? So on the left is the name of the attribute, on the right is the value of that attribute. Within that, we have the content. It's what's inside of the tag. Sometimes you guys might hear it called children. And at the very end, we have something called the end tag, okay? Almost all HTML tags will have a beginning and closing. There are a couple of edge cases in which you do not have, need to have a, a closing one, but you guys will see them in a second. I'll show you. Here are some of the most common HTML tags. There are many others, okay? There are many, many others. You guys are not expected to memorize all these. You're not going to remember them. But what you need to do is know how to uh, look at your documentation to understand what, how they all fit together as well as what attributes we can assign to them. Okay, CSS. CSS is just another language which allows us to uh, manipulate the styles of the content. And I know that seems abstract. Once again, I'll show you in a second. Here's a basic anatomy of a CSS rule. On the left, you guys can see in yellow right here, we have something called a selector. We're saying, hey, focus this one thing, pick this one thing, and do something to it. Inside uh, of a selector, you guys will see an opening and a closing curly brace. Within the opening and closing curly brace, we have properties and values. Properties and values. These will basically say, this is how we document how we're going to make our page look. There are many, 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 many different types of selectors, much more advanced ones. I'm gonna show you some very simple ones to stay concise today, okay? But just know that if you guys Google something that is more complicated looking and it works, I'm not gonna be mad at you. And in fact, I'm gonna be kinda impressed. That's how you guys are gonna get a job, okay? You're gonna talk to your, the, the person interviewing, interviewing you and you're gonna tell them something they didn't know. That's all you gotta do. Tell me something I don't know, and then I'll start being impressed. But just know that it's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take a lot before you guys can tell me something I don't know. So just know that I encourage you guys to self-study and keep moving, because here on the left you can see an example of how many different types of selectors there are, values and properties there are, okay? So anyway, the most important ones we need, we, we need to think about right now is selectors is element type, the ID type, as well as the class. And I'll show you an example in just a second. Here's a small number of the properties that we're gonna be using, okay? Guess what background co dash color changes, guys? The background, yeah, exactly, okay? All you have to do is read it, okay? Just read it, 
and put on your thinking hats. Where's my thinking helmet? Oh, hold on. Okay, that's on. <laughs> Remember, thinking is dangerous, but you guys need to do it. Okay, we're locked and loaded. Okay, uh, we're going, we're moving forward. Okay, so basically this image is kind of a, um, kind of a high level overview of what's going on. As you can see, a mama here gave birth to two babies. What do you guys notice? It looks a little bit different. No, it looked a little bit the same. Obviously they kind of look different, I'll give you that one. But you notice that uh, the mom has red hair and the children have red hair. That's what CSS does, okay? When we apply something to its parent, then it will also apply to its children. Okay, uh, we're gonna skip this one. Hold on, I forgot which one this is. In a moment, you guys can do this exercise before we get started on our, um, on our Google clone. Which one am I in right now? I'm confused. Sierra, okay. But there's something called a CSS box model. We're gonna talk about that more in detail as we go. It's basically understanding the difference between margin, border, padding, width, content, and height. I know that's a bunch of keywords. Okay, you guys are not gonna memorize it until you guys practice. You guys gotta practice it a couple times and then, then you'll get a feel for it, okay? Here's a more uh, a diagram as well, which talks about block versus inline elements. To be honest with you, you don't even need to worry about this because tomorrow we're gonna teach you something called Flex, and Flex is gonna solve many of the problems that this thing uh, originally was intended to solve, okay? How long have websites been around, guys? Anyone know? 30 like 30 years, correct. Websites have been around for 30 years. We are not writing HTML websites the same way we wrote them 30 years ago, okay? People have come up with better ways to design websites write our code simpler, more easily, uh, more easily maintained, et cetera. So just know that sometimes you guys are gonna Google and you're gonna see old examples and you guys need to put on your thinking hat and figure out how to do it the new way or the better way. Or we read old, doc uh, old documentation, we read it with a, uh, with a grain of salt. With a grain of salt. In English, that means that yes, someone took the time to write something so, so that you could read it, so that you could understand it, so that you can learn. But it is not perfect. There's no promise that is perfect. Here's another exercise. You guys don't have to play around this. I would prefer that you guys do Google. Here's another diagram which explains um, the content. But like, like I said, I'm gonna show you. I need to show you guys. Padding versus margin is basically the distance between two objects, two elements, okay? I'm gonna show you that one too. Oops, I just realized I'm skipping over a bunch there. Okay, my bad guys, my bad. Ah. Okay, that's it, that's enough for the uh, tutorial, okay? All right, so let's get moving. Guys, you can see here that we have a, uh, a tool open called iTerm. Every single one of you guys, I want you to down download iTerm. iTerm 2, exactly. If you're on Windows, then you guys probably need to download uh, GitLens. Okay, oh my. Say again? iTerm 2. Okay, this is just like fixing a car. I can have 30 years experience of fixing cars, but if I do not have a wrench, I cannot do my job. <clears throat> okay, this is a tool that helps you do your job. iTerm2 or Get Lens if you're on Windows, okay? Make sure you guys get that installed today. This will allow us to move around our computer. What does that mean? So watch this. You guys can see on my computer right now, I have a folder called Sierra. If I wanted to create a new folder in here, what could I do, guys? Someone help me out. Say again? 
I don't think that worked. That opened up a new window. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, how many folders do we have inside this folder called Sierra on my computer? None. None. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm gonna run a command called make directory, make mkdir, I'm gonna call it Google. Now please pay attention very carefully. Watch what happens to Sierra. This is very important to understand. Watch this, I'm about to hit enter. What happened in this folder? We created a new folder, very simple, okay? So we need to know how to manipulate folders and files on our computer because these folders and files will, will become the projects that we're working with, okay? So in addition to the MKDIR Google, this command says, hey, make a folder and call it this thing on the right. Now if I run a command called ls, ls, I can see that I do in fact have a folder here called Google. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move into it. Okay, MCD, Google. If I type in LS right now, guys, what should I see? Nothing. Correct. Why? Yes, we just made the folder. There's nothing in here. Thank you, Ed. Okay, thank you, Ed. Just pay attention, lies. We type in LS, we don't see anything in here. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I guarantee you, I double click this, we see nothing. And our suspicion, our hypothesis is confirmed. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of files. You guys not do not on, on Mac it's called touch, okay? But these are the files and this is what you have to name them. It has to be called index.html, it has to be called readme.md, it ha and the other two you actually don't have to call them that, but you're supposed to call them that, okay? That is the convention. That is the convention. That's what everyone calls it. So I want you to call it scripts.js and styles.js. So I can run this command and it's going to create how many different files for us? Four files. And you guys can see, in fact, that these are four files that are created. If I double click index.html, our computer will be smart enough to know that an HTML file should be opened up in what? In the browser. If I double click this, you guys will see that, hey, it did, in fact, open up uh, our, our, uh, our file. And you guys can even see in the URL here, it's a locally sourced file. It's a file that is only on our computer. And there's a distinction here because one day you guys want to go to www.myapp.com and then you want to serve this file. You want this file to be available to other people elsewhere. Okay? But right now we're going to start real simple. We're going to forget about production. So I'm going to now introduce, uh, oops. I'm, I'm now going to open up my code editor inside this, uh, this project right here. I'm going to run code dot. When I run this command, I'm telling the computer, please open up a, a code editor, or well, specifically open up VS Code and allow me to start working. I'm gonna be working now. So inside of index.html, we have absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the H1, and I'm just gonna say, hello world. This is called a smoke test. We're just gonna test to make sure everything is working. So we're gonna go back to our browser, and if I refresh this page, what do we expect to see? Correct. So we did, in fact, correctly use an HTML, uh, index.html file, open it up in our browser, and actually wrote some code that uh, you know, had some results. OK, so that's actually not that impressive yet. We're going to do something more. So remember, the objective today is to build Chrome, or build uh, Google, OK? We're going to build this page right here. What are some things that we see here, guys? We need some uh, group participation. What do we see here? A search bar? Image. Image, yep. Two buttons. Two what? Two buttons, yep. Footer. A footer, yep. Navigation bar. Navigation bar. Okay, you guys got all the things I wanted you guys to say. Nice. 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 Okay. So we're going to move. I went ahead and found a link for you. And I want each and every one of you guys to do the same thing. And this is still not updated. Charles. It's not updating. It's not updating. Sorry, our tools are sometimes not working. I'm sorry, guys. So it's okay, we can just Google it. HTML5 template. Okay, and there's one I want you guys to use. It's a HTML5 template. Right here. Is that it? We're just gonna Google HTML5 template, and we see this one from SitePoint. Site point. Okay, we scroll down once we get here, and we're just gonna copy this code snippet right here. Okay? We're going to paste this inside of our index.html, okay? 
then we'll go back to our uh, our our page right here and we refresh we don't see anything why because we don't have anything in the body of our uh, website yet okay and actually my bad I kind of glossed over this this is the simplest version of a website you guys can build right here okay it should have this thing on line one okay you don't need to know exactly what it does all it does is basically say that hey this is an HTML file okay that's what line one does additionally line three says that like this this, this site is in English between lines four and 13, you guys see a head tag, right? On line four, we see opening head tag. On line 13, we see a closing head tag. And there's some additional code inside of here. The head tag is used to describe your page. We describe our page to the browser, to the client. So watch what I mean. So notice right here on the browser, Notice how in the browser it says HTML5 right up here? You guys see that? HTML5 Herald? Well, if we change the title and say uh, Sierra, for example, we save, we come back here, we refresh, we see that it does in fact say Sierra. Okay, so there's a couple of you guys that ask why I want you guys to use v uh, VS Code. Because there is a bunch of uh, free so software on VS Code that's gonna make our lives easier. Okay? so. I want you guys to open up your extensions tab and type in live server. There's, a, there's an extension right here, okay? You guys install the extension, install the extension. If you install the extension and everything is working, you should be able to click this button right here in the bottom right called go live, okay? Watch what happens when I click go live. I click go live, and you guys are gonna see that a server kicks off. And then what does it do? It just basically says, hey, Pay attention to any files that are changed inside of this, uh, in this project. If any of these files are changed, then update the site. So what do I mean? Notice how a second ago when I hit in Sierra, I saved the file, nothing happened, I had to refresh. Right now, I'm gonna type in hello world and save. As soon as I save, you guys will see Sierra updates up here. It's called a hot server. It's, it's actively paying attention to when you update a file. When you update the file, it will, it will run again. Okay, does that make sense, everyone? What was the uh, extension for? Live server. It's right here, live server. Okay, so that's not good enough yet. That's not that impressive. Uh, let me go back to our instructions. Okay, so there's a bunch of different things we can do here, right? We can also update the icon. We can update the icon if we want it. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm just gonna grab this file from uh, my locally. Uh, one second. I accidentally close this. So imagine that you guys were tasked with updating the icon. Do you see how this has got the status icon right here? What if you wanted it to be like Coder School? All you would have to do is find a file, okay? What I mean by find is just basically get a file from someone who is on your team. We're gonna get that file and then we're gonna add it to our directory. We're going to add it to our directory. So I'm just gonna paste it here. We got a new file called coderschool.png, okay? so. Um, I'm gonna copy this now that I think about it. So, like I said, <coughs> excuse me. Like I said, there are many, many different HTML tags, right? This one right here on line eight is called a link tag, and specifically the attribute rel says, hey, this is an icon. The last one is ca called an href, href, okay? That means hyper hyperlink reference. It's saying, hey, where can I find this file? So if I save it now, and I jump back over here, to hello world, you guys notice that the icon changes. Nice. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and move quicker. Can you guys all see the screen, by the way? Is anyone having problems? Can you get the mic right? It's kind of hot. Okay, so what's the next thing that we need to do, guys? We need to build our nav bar. So we're gonna use something called a div. Obviously in the instructions we, uh, we gave you guys a couple of different, uh, you know, a bunch of different links to explain this further, okay? 
Oh, my bad. Let me go ahead and say focus on our head tag, okay? Inside our, our head tag, we can also add a style tag, okay? And this is where we can apply styles to our application. So, just like I said a second ago, we need to use a selector. Did I use this right? We, need, we apply a selector, I'm gonna say, hey, select all the divs. I wanna give it a uh, height of 100 pixels, a width of 100 pixels, a background color of red. Uh, let's save it, jump back over to our application, and you guys can see what happened right here, guys. Where did this red box come from? On line 23, we defined a div. We wrote a div on line 23. On lines 14 through 18, we said, hey, CSS, any element that is of class div, any element of type div, give it a height of 100, give it a width of 100, and give it a background color of uh, red. Sorry, I couldn't think right there. Obviously, we can do the same thing again. Now, let's go ahead and put some margin. Let's think about what the difference between margin is. Okay, margin. So we say margin is, I don't know, 100 pixels. So that's saying, hey, what, when I say just margin like that, what we're trying to say is give me at least 100 pixels of space from any other element on the screen. Okay? And padding is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to show you that right now. Inside of our first hello world, we have, or inside of our first div, we have hello world, right? So you guys can see that inside of this box, inside of this div that has hello world, the text is hugging the border of our element. So if we wanted to stop that, we could do padding left and do 150 pixels, for example. So when we say padding left, it says, hey, from my left side, please make everything at least 50 pixels away. So what is the hypothesis, guys? What's going to happen to Hello World? It's going to move to the right. Yes. There you go. OK, you guys all with me? Okay, so like, let's go ahead. This is just showing you guys that we can style inside of this, uh, inside of this file as well. Additionally, if you guys want to like say apply a style, notice how the div applies right here. Because we targeted a div, it applied to every single div. If we wanted to make specific CSS code to a specific div, we can also style it inline. So I can say background color is blue. Does that make sense, guys? Right? Because on line 25, we, we uh, applied some styles specific to the first div, the first div had its own color, its own background color. Okay, so this is not very useful. We're gonna go ahead and delete this, and we're gonna do something better. We're going to change this thing right here. We're just gonna delete line 12. We're gonna look at this href, and you guys can see that href here is saying, look inside of something called CSS. Inside of that, look for something called styles.css. So I'm gonna open up our navigator, and I'm gonna show you something magical. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it CSS. Do you see that pretty little icon right there? This icon is specific for CSS. What VS Code is trying to tell you is that a lot of other people have written code before you guys, and they're expecting to see a folder called CSS. If I added a folder called Coder School, notice that it does not have a specific icon. If I add a folder called Loy, it also does not have a specific icon. That is because Loy is not special. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm special. Okay, I am. I'm just kidding. But okay, inside of CSS, just know that this is a, a convention. We're expecting to find a folder called CSS. Okay. So inside of our styles.css, I'm going to do something called another smoke test. I'm going to say, hey, body, give me a background color of red. If I save it and I refresh the website, notice that nothing changes. Why does nothing change? Because on line 12, we're saying, hey, look inside of CSS, look for a file called styles.css, and then import that into index.html for consumption. I know that's a lot of big words, so I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna take styles.css, we're going to drag it into CSS. And notice how immediately upon doing that, what happened? Live server, notice that there was a change in our directory, and it automatically ran again. And because this time on line 12, when, when our HTML5 file, HTML 
file ran on line 12. It did in fact find this. It, find, it found a file called styles.css and then it applied them. Okay, guys? Okay, so, re so Reddit is not that useful. Okay, so um, um, okay, so 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 now we're just gonna start moving into. We're gonna delete these styles right here. Okay, we don't need these anymore. This is kind of sloppy. Uh, we're gonna delete this one. Hold on, let me go ahead and add it back because I want to make sure that this is being applied. So I want to see a red background. Okay, we do in fact see it right now. Okay, so inside of Google, guys, what did we what did we say that we saw earlier? We saw a navigation bar. The navigation bar had uh, had some icons, had icons and text, okay? So inside of this background color thingy, I'm gonna delete this one. I'm just gonna leave the style right here because I just wanna make sure I understand what it is. I'm gonna add a anchor tag, and then I'm gonna add a, re uh, a value called href, an attribute called href. We're gonna give it a link. We're gonna say google.com, okay? And then what's it called on Google? Gmail. So we go back here, you guys will notice that there is our link right there. We're gonna do color white. Is that working? Okay, so I want this text to be white. So I'm gonna focus it, I'm gonna target it. I'm gonna use a, a, a CSS selector. I'm gonna say color, is it color or is it font color, I forgot. Okay, font color, white. Hmm, I think it's just color. Okay, it worked, it's, it's there. If I click it, it's gonna take us to that, to the, to the, uh, to the website uh, that is inside of this href right here, guys. Obviously, if I put in what, Facebook, and I clicked it, what would happen? Obviously, thank you. Thank you for always paying attention. I wasn't sure who, who said that. Okay, so, um. All right, that's not good enough yet, guys. We need more. Did I just delete something? Oh no, I collapsed it. So we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do Gmail first. We're gonna do images. And now we can see that we have these two links. Additionally, we need something called an icon. So we're gonna Google Font Awesome. We look at Font Awesome. We look at uh, Font Awesome Five Intro. And you guys can see here that font awesome, we need to copy another link tag right here. So I'm gonna copy that link tag, jump back over to our, uh, our project and paste it above this custom styles.css right here. Please, what, any style sheet that you guys make yourselves that you do not import from somewhere else, put it at the bottom of this head tag, okay? Any custom style that you guys write yourself, it should always be at the bottom of the head tag. Okay guys? Why is that? Because if we do not, if, Stop. CSS is a, is a uh, because if we do not do that, someone else's styles that we import, import it will overwrite our own styles. Whatever is read last. Exactly. I mean, I, there are other rules that apply, but that right now that's the most important thing to think about. So for example, right, on line four, these will both work. Orange. CSS is not going to complain that we did something stupid. Okay, why would we do two of the exact same things? It's simply going to read the last one. Okay, so notice on line six is the last one read, so our links are now orange. Okay, it just reads them. If you overwrite a previous style, it's okay. CSS is not going to complain. Okay, so, uh, so now we imported uh, font awesome, and then we can look at our documentation again. We scroll down, and they give you an example here. W3Schools is one of the best websites for learning web development. You guys need to get familiar with it. So I'm gonna copy this over, and I'm gonna paste it at the end right here. This clock. Okay, and jump back over. And you guys can see that we do in fact have a clock. Nice. Okay, so in addition, we're gonna have a color. I think this will work. White. That did not work, okay. So what can we do here, guys? Yes. I'm just gonna add a new uh, class. Okay, I'm gonna say uh, icon. Let's call it icon for right now. We're gonna focus it. And if we're, if we're focusing, if we're trying to select a class, we cannot simply name uh, it. Do you see the difference between lines one and four? Is that these are both actual elements. Right now we want to focus a class. 
On line 20 here on the screen, on the tab on the left, you guys see that we have an E tag, an I tag, right? And we gave it an additional class of icon right here. So we're gonna target it this way. Now we can say color in white. That won't work. Okay, so now this is in fact working, okay? Okay, so the next part is what? What do we need to do next? What's the difference between this website and Google, guys? Links are right justified. Yes, links are on the right. He used the keyword justify. Tomorrow we're gonna learn about what that means in more detail. Right now, we're gonna do this a really, really bad way, okay? And it is very, very, very bad. On, inside this div right here on line 17, we're just going to say padding left is 80%. We go back and we see we, got, we did in fact get it to work. Yes, that worked guys, but can someone help me out? What are some potential problems that could occur? Well, actually my... What is that in fact responsive? Man, I solved this problem without thinking about it. Shit. Okay, I sort of solved the problem. I sort of solved the problem already, okay? Put it, put it this way. If I would have done pad padding left 1,000 pixels, which is called a hard code, let's just say 800 pixels. It does in fact sit on the right, but as we, we resize our screen, everything looks funky. Do you see that? That is not mobile responsive. And you cannot build websites like this in 2019. 2019, people have their phones. There are more people that have phones than they have uh, computers. So we need to be prepared for those people. So well, what I'm trying to say is that uh, right now, we're just going to use percentages. So the first solution is to use percentages, okay? Use percentages. That will kind of solve the problem, but it is not the, the perfect solution. Tomorrow, we'll talk about a better solution, okay? So right now, we're going to say, okay, it looks all right. So let's go ahead. And something else I forgot to mention is I want you guys to choose loud and ugly colors as you're working. Okay, choose loud and ugly colors and then delete them later. I promise you, deleting is super easy. It's super easy to delete old code. All right, so we're gonna create a new dev and this is going to have a class content. Here are some movies matching. We're gonna call this one main content, okay guys? And once again, we're gonna choose a, uh, a, um, a loud color. And just so you know, I want you guys to get familiar with your hotkeys and try to read these little pop-ups that show up in VS Code. They're there for a reason. If I type in BGC, you guys will see that it's saying, hey, you can press tab and it'll automatically complete the rest of it. Why do I want you to do this? Because it is faster and because you're less likely to typo. Every single one of you will typo in your lives, I promise you. I save it, why do we not see anything here? Because we have not given it enough, uh, we have not given it any proportions. So we're gonna say width is 100%, height is, I don't know, 80%. Hmm, did I say over here? Hmm. Hmm. What? Okay, so we can do something else. We're gonna do instead of percentage, we're gonna do, do view height. Okay? All right, that seems okay. And this one we're gonna say 100% uh, view width. I want you guys to play around with this stuff, uh, with these styles, and get familiar with them, okay? Okay, so now we can see a con uh, container, but this one's a bit confusing because they're the same colors. We're gonna save, and we can see that now we have this content, right? So the next step is to do what, guys? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna add an image. And I'm going to save you guys some time. I'm just gonna copy one over. So it's logo gif. This is the logo that I got from Google yesterday. I'd actually changed. Yep. Okay, so once again, now we're gonna use a different tag. We're gonna use an image tag. And we're gonna say the source is uh, logo.gif. Then we're gonna close it. Okay, so that's how we drew an image on the screen. Okay, so guys, can someone help me out? There are ways to move elements across the screen. I want this in the center. Okay, style sheet. Say again? Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, but so right now we only have one. Let's just keep it simple. Text align right here? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure this will work, but we're gonna find out. Text align is saying, hey, move all the text inside of me. 
Okay, so once again, this goes back to margin and pattern. We're gonna use margin left, margin left. I'm gonna say, I don't know, 500 pixels. We save it, oops, a little too much. So this goes back to percentages again, okay? We can say margin left 40%, and 40% here is indicative of its parent, okay? The percentage will always be indicative of the parent, okay? So it's saying, hey, my image thing, make it 40%, make the margin to the left 40% of my parent. What is the parent of this image right here? Yes, this main content thing, okay? And that's like kind of what it is. I don't know, I don't really like it. Let's go ahead and let's play around with these values a little bit. Okay, that's kind of how I want it. So now we're gonna do margin top. I'm gonna say, I don't know, uh, 5%. Refresh, and that looks okay. Okay, so that seems like everything is working. Now we need to do what, an input? And remember a second ago, guys, I said that almost all HTML tags will have a closing and an ending tag. Image and input are the exceptions. These two will not have children within them. So we save, we refresh, and we can see that our input is here, right? Because it's going from left to right. How can we do it to go to the bottom? Hmm. I think we can do a t uh, display. What? We're not gonna use flex today. I think it's inline block. Could be wrong here. Hmm. I'm gonna look at some old examples. Okay, hold on, let me just add some buttons. I'm sorry guys, when I explain, I'm not actually doing it the way I would normally do this, okay? So we're gonna add some buttons. I'm gonna Google search. Where? Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling lucky. Okay, so we got some buttons. Hmm. Add a break here. Okay, nice, nice. Thank you, Charles, thank you. So we're just gonna break. We're gonna say go to the next line. Okay, so now we can see that, um, you know, that we got sort of the things where we need them to be. It's not 100% perfect, but we're getting there, okay? So let's make our input wider. Let's say width is, I don't know, 80%. Okay, that's kind of big. Let me say 60%. Okay, that's good. And I'm gonna say uh, margin left is, uh, 40%. Oops, that's too much. CSS is not magic, guys. It's just a lot about experimenting, to be honest with you. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna do the same thing to our uh, buttons, okay? We're gonna put this inside of a div because we want them to be treated the same. We're gonna say this uh, class is button container. We're gonna focus it, select it. We're gonna say uh, background color is uh, red. No, I think I already have red. I'm gonna say uh, green. Hmm. Okay, so now how can we get this to sit in the center? Let's just say padding left. Okay, that seems all right. Okay, that's almost there. We got the buttons almost where we wanted them to do. So now I'm gonna show you guys some more advanced um, ways you can manipulate your elements using CSS, okay? So imagine you guys want this uh, button to change colors as you, you move your cursor over it. Notice how my cursor right here, I hover over the button, the button does nothing. Is that how Google works? Say again? Exactly. So, so just know this little itty bitty little touches. These touches are what makes sets you apart from noobs. Real shit. The more of these that you guys have, the more professional you look, the more likely it is that you guys will get the job. So I'm gonna say, hey, any button, if you hover over it, make the background color green. So watch this, we're gonna hover over it, and you notice that it turns green. You don't, you probably, most of the time when you guys want these little itty bitty animations, you don't want them to be so drastic, okay? That's kind of a huge change right there, okay? You don't want to turn from white to green. So I'm going to show you what I want you guys to do. We're going to say uh, border is one pixel, uh, solid, gray. Refresh. 
kind of a little bit light, lighter. Obviously, you guys need to fiddle with this a little bit, okay? There's another uh, attribute that I want you guys to uh, know as well. I'm gonna say button. So hold on, let's just make the button a little bit bigger. We'll say height is, I don't know, 50 pixels. Width is 150 pixels. We'll save it, and it's kind of bigger. And you guys can kind of see that effect now. Obviously, this is not perfect, but that's not the uh, objective here. The objective is just to know how all these parts fit together. Okay, so one thing you guys will probably need to know is how to make things circular. If you guys look at Google, you guys will see how like this button has a little bit of a circularness on it, right? And also the input. So if we want to make their little, make our button have a little bit of circularness, we need to have border radius. And we can just throw in any value for right now, okay? I'm just gonna throw in uh, 10 pixels. Go back to our thing. And you guys now notice that we have a little bit of circularness to this, right? We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for our input. And once again, the input changes, or the input has a little bit of circularness over it. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you before we move, uh, before I break and let you guys figure this out, is uh, we're gonna figure out how to change our pointer. Notice how our pointer, the cursor, is a what? It's a mouse thingy. I don't know what that is, it's an arrow, okay? I want it to change when I hover over the image. So I can say, image, hover, Pointer, I forgot what it's called. Hold on, I'm cheating. Cursor, my bad. Cursor is pointer. Okay, so you guys notice how I have an arrow right here. If I hover over the image, it should change. Why do you guys want to do this? Yes, to let the user know they can click it most times. Obviously, there are going to be other situations in which you guys want to use this. Right now, we're trying to keep this lesson concise, okay? Okay, so um, what else? I forgot what else I'm supposed to show you. One second. Okay, the last most important thing that I want you guys to have is memorized by the end of this class, okay? Is that you guys will notice that as soon as this website loads, that if I start typing, I, I, I cannot type. Why can I not type? Because the input in which we're expected to type it is not focused. It has not been focused yet. So we can go over to our HTML, find the input, and then add an additional uh, attribute. And some attributes do not have values because when we apply them, it's already understood what they should do. So for example, autofocus, what is it supposed to do? It just autofocuses it. It's not gonna order us pizza. It's not gonna find us a date this Friday. Autofocus is going to autofocus whatever element it is that has this attribute applied to it. What if you have multiple elements I'm not 100% sure. Let's find out. It starts with the most, the first one. So you guys can see that I just learned with you. Your instructor is not perfect. Let's go ahead and add five of them. So I can see. Okay, that's what it is. If you apply this to multiple elements, the first one wins. Is the uh, behavior I'm observing. So on Google, I see that we only have one input, so I'm going to leave it. Okay. Change the image. Okay, so the last thing I told you guys, I want you to give me bad colors, any color. Now let's just delete these colors now, okay? We're gonna delete them and we're gonna make them look okay. Okay, we can get rid of this blue. Refresh. Okay, this is not perfect yet, guys, but I want you guys all to do this uh, uh, right now. And the feedback that I've heard from every single one of my previous classes is that they don't want me talking for like two straight hours, okay? So right now we're going to break. You guys are going to work on your own, or no, with your uh, partner, because in a moment we're going to pair program, and uh, we're going to get this project done today. This can be done in 10 minutes if you put on your thinking hats, okay? We'll put people in pairs for today. I guess for today, just work with the person next to you. Starting from tomorrow, we'll actually cycle you through different people. If it chance to work with many different people, over your career, you'll have to get some used to communicating with different types of people. Do you want to use the screen? Um, I can just use. Okay, let me just use. Because okay, okay. don't don't pull it out. Okay, otherwise it's gonna say it. it's gonna oh, just, just stop it.